totally foreign against guns. The fact of the matter is, is those people who hunt understand the gun like others do not. However, nobody else should own a gun except those who vote for me in Vermont. And having said that, the fact is a gun is a very dangerous thing in the hands of a liberal like myself who is on medication because I am so suicidal that I might pick it up and slaughter everyone around me. Therefore, I think all guns should be banned because people like me are insane and hysterical. <laughs> I'm working. I'm work. I'm working the Bernie Sanders voice. And by the way, th stay in the line. I'm sending you my new <laughs> book, Government Zero. I'd like to get a copy to Bernie, but we don't know how to reach him. We're trying through all of the ILGWU uh, contacts that we still have. The International Ladies Government Workers Union. We're trying the Brazier Union. Those who. But the thing is, uh, okay, yeah, it it's fun. I mean, I I, I had a hangover today from the debate. I, I watched it too long after a three-hour show. Before I knew it, it was on. I figured I watched 15 minutes. I was captivated by the Soviet-era mentality of the entire structure. And I couldn't stop watching it for about an hour, I'll be honest with you. And then I got a headache from watching it. I was too much screen all day long. I'm on three screens during the show. I got the call screener. I got the uh, news screener. Email screener. I got the Skype screen. I like it. I like all the screens in front of me. And then I go to a screen for an hour afterwards. So I got a mug. And then I, it can't be the beer. I'm five hours too early for a drink, but that's what I think I'm going to have in five hours from now. Really, tonight's, I, I got to make up for last night. I need compensation. Jeremy on WBAP, what's on your mind today on the Savage Nation? Yes, sir. I felt compelled to call. I spoke with you once before about Robin Williams. I'm a shrink in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And we had a great oh, conversation. Oh, God. God re poor Robin Williams, how he hung with the, with the strap in the garage. Very sad. Li he lived four doors down from me here. And So what, what are you calling about tonight? Who are you going to analyze? Well, listen, the, when you were bringing up Obama earlier, I wanted to point something out to you that, that I think... Uh, hold on. Can you stay on the line? We want to hear a psychiatrist analysis of why an entire European nation thinks Obama's mentally unstable and needs to be removed from office. And then we'll ask him about Bernie Sanders' mentality. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Bernie Sanders was born and raised in the borough of Brooklyn in New York City. Graduated from the University of Chicago, well, that unto itself. While a student, old Bernie was a member of the Young People's Socialist League and an active civil rights protest organizer for the Congress of Racial Equality. He also was involved with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Now, if you look at the guy's history, and then you listen to him last night where he tried to you know, reinvent himself, they asked him, how could you serve as commander-in-chief when you were a draft dodger? Compared to Jim Webb, for example, who was a, a, is a hero, not was, you have to listen to the socialist liar in clip seven. Just play clip seven of old Bernie Sanders, how he tries to repaint himself as a patriot. When I was a young man, I strongly opposed the war in Vietnam. Not the brave men like Jim who fought in that war, but the policy which got right, us let's involved. Stop right. Now, you know and I know he's a liar, like all of them. That, that's not, not a big in, insight. He opposed the policy of the Vietnam War, but not the brave men. Oh, really? Who was it who spit at the brave men when they came back from Vietnam, Bernie? It was you and your cohorts. You and your communist cohorts who spit on them in the streets and called them baby killers, you piece of garbage, you. I'd love, I'd, I'd pay $1,000 right now. I'm going to off right now. Anybody who has a still or an 8 millimeter tape of Bernie Sanders, possibly, probably had a beard in those days, Birkenstocks, Screaming against soldiers as they come back to America from the Vietnam era, a thousand dollars, and I'll take you to dinner. That's all. I, I want it. I want that right now. I want to see him spitting at a soldier, screaming at them, calling baby killers. Yeah, someone's going to really follow him into a hail of machine gun bullets. Right. Now Webb, on the other hand, I tell you, if anyone would follow this guy. He's a real hero. But that's just the beginning. Jeremy on WBAP in Dallas is a, is a shrink who has an insight on Obama's uh, mind, if you want to call it that. Jeremy, welcome back. So uh, give us the, the short version. Yes, yeah, sir. The short version is when, you're, when you've been watching and observing Obama this whole time, you've had an uneasy feeling that something is wrong. 
And what I can tell you is that as a clinician, that's the first thing I look for when I'm in the room with somebody. Anytime something doesn't make sense or an intervention doesn't work, I start thinking personality disorder client because they have the inability to have insight. In other words, they can't connect the dots from what they do to why. They okay, so the other day Obama gave a speech on 60 Minutes. He had made an appearance. And Steve Croft kept trying to press him on his failures in Syria as opposed to a Putin, and he was in denial. Would that be an example of a man who is mentally off? That is exactly right, and let me tell you why. Because in his world, in his disordered thinking, in order for him to be right, somebody has to be wrong. And in order for him to be wrong, somebody has to be right. And he's not going to allow that to happen. So then the, the, the brain has to do away with the ability to have insight, which means, you know, this happened because you did this. So it's not going to work. He's not going to be able to have the kind of insight to where he can be positively or negatively redirected by any other force. It's not going to happen. And he'll construct everything. But, but let me ask you something. Having said that, isn't that true of most strong-willed uh, achiever types? They're never wrong. So here's what I can tell you. It's true in that that's a, that's a tactic that they use, but it's not their baseline method of operating. That's the difference. But how do we determine the difference between someone who is very strong-willed and, and unwilling to admit they're wrong from those who are unable to because they don't ever know they've made a mistake? That is a very difficult uh, line to distinguish, isn't it? Yeah, well, as a, for a professional, it isn't because we're trained to do that. Because, you know, we're trained to, to draw out the insight in a person because, A, they'll either... only People only go to psychotherapy when they want to change or when they want permission to stay the same. And so... Oh, wow, that's interesting. Oh, when they want permission to stay the same. I never heard it put that way. Yeah, yeah, that's why they sit there and the guy tells them that they're fine. They did nothing wrong. They, in other words, they're going there for dispensation like he's a priest. The shrink is supposed to tell him you did nothing wrong, the other guy hurt you. Yeah, very good. And also, you know, the, it's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. You know, I mean, if you wanted to look at an analysis of him... You know, I think Whoa. this guy, he has such a compounding lifetime of regret and 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 almost remorse that... He wait, 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 this is interesting, because you're not saying the same things about Obama and Bernie, which is very interesting. Now, now let's go back to Obama for a minute. Here was a young man, a boy, when he was a boy, who never could do wrong. He was picked, hand-picked from the beginning. It was almost like a Manchurian candidate. They knew this guy would go very far. He was tall, good-looking, had a great voice, and they groomed him from early on. Nobody ever said to him, Barry, you're doing something wrong. Would you agree with me that he's an example of that type of child going back? Actually, I will agree with you, and I'll actually do you one better. Not only did he surround himself with people who wouldn't tell him he was doing something wrong, but he surrounded himself with people who are willing to lie to gain whatever movement they wanted to. And you get used to that. You feed on it. It's almost like an addiction. So he spent the rest of his life having to surround himself with a cacophony of those who are who are like that. I mean, they provided the environment like a petri dish for his disordered thinking to blossom. I mean, that's how it goes. Well, yeah. So the grandparents protected him from anybody who criticized him. The the skids were greased for him from Punahou High School on for obvious reasons, which I don't have to mention on this show. He was a product of advancement without qualifications his entire life. And then he gets shunted into the presidency. Here is a man who never would have qualified to be a Secret Service agent or an FBI agent at that time because of his associations with known terrorists and known communists. And here he is now sitting on the top of the United States of America doing things that everyone with a rational mind will say are not in the best interest of the nation. But we've covered this before. Now we move on to today. Now we see this, this list of candidates on the stage. Tell us about Hillary Clinton's psychosis. Well, I think, I think with Hillary Clinton, it's a little bit different. You know, with Hillary Clinton, I actually tend to think that really her personality is the problem. I don't think, you know, she's not very likable, and she doesn't know how to draw people towards her personality and what she can offer from herself, but rather what she can control and offer people, you know? And, then, and that's, the, that's the... Why do so many people like myself find her particularly repugnant? What is it about her that turns so many people into a, a yuck factor, where they look at her and get sick, in plain English? What is it about that? Is it the smile, that smugness, the, the unwillingness to change that, that rigid, that fake smile? What is it about her that turns so many people off against her? 
I'll tell you what it is, because I think on the journey, on, let's say, for example, your journey and my journey, which are reasonable journeys of success, which only get only which you only encounter one way. That's through hard work. You said some, something one time about the only way that you're going to that you're ever going to succeed in life is through staying up all night, plowing through school, hard work. I don't know. It was one of these things that you said that just I've never forgotten. And that's the truth. And along your path and along my path, we encountered 100 Hillary Clintons. Period, and we could we could move through them, you know, like a snake. We could, you could you get around them and 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 gather your success. She is the type that runs universities. She is the type that you would encounter largely in academic or government institutions. She's not the type of woman that you would encounter in the business world. That type of mentality and that type of facial structure, meaning facial delivery, generally doesn't appear in the business world. It's not real enough for business. That's my, that's been my experience. I know some tough women in business. They don't have that persona at all. Exactly. And so let me tell you why you're so right. Because when you're in academia, your, your loop of constant feedback is is basically your grades and 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 how you're moving through that structure you can avoid people like that and you know they didn't earn their keep you know they didn't earn their place that's the difference in the business world so now with hillary clinton people like you and me are reasonable people we're forced to look at her and and deal with her personality structure and there's like nothing we can do about it so we have to find a way to make sense of it because we have to live with it you have to analyze it and study it so that you can put it out there as a product for your listeners. So you can do What astounds me is that other than the Clinton machine, which is awesome and powerful and has more money than anyone else from foreign and domestic sources, other than the Clinton machine, where is her base coming from? She is not well liked by most women in this country, no matter what the sales pitch is. Who does she appeal to with that with that story? First of all, we've seen her for eight years in action as a co president. Then we saw her disaster as a as Secretary of State. She engineered the Arab Spring. She caused the, dis, the, the, the wreckage in the Middle East. She won't cop to anything that she did wrong. I heard it last night again with Benghazi. She talked about why after Gaddafi, that monster, fell. They Do you know that they had the first free elections in Libyan history? Do you know that people voted? In total denial as to what she actually created. She must know better, don't you think? I do, but I think that, I think with close, with that that that's perfect analysis because with Hillary, you know that she knows better, and that makes it worse. Worse with Bernie Sanders, this is a guy who will simply just to be relevant, he'll say anything and do anything. Obama doesn't know any better because I think right now I agree with you. She see Obama doesn't actually know the damage he has wrought. I think that's what you were saying. Hillary knows what she did. But she's a, such a smooth liar that she can, oh, yes, they voted, that kind of guy. But Obama doesn't even know what he did because no one will tell him. Exactly. I mean, Hillary's blinded by, by pure blind selfishness. I mean, I think her, I mean, I think her she, she does know better. She's just one of those people that you just have to simply outsmart and outwit. And her, a lot of her base is going to come from people who are simply confused and are intimidated by her, by her national presence. Because mm -hmm. they're confused. You know, well, Bernie Sanders, relevant. Bernie Sanders graduated from the University of Chicago, Bachelor of Arts in Poli Sci. What else? He married Deborah Schilling, and they bought a summer home in Vermont. They had no children and divorced in '66. Did you know that he spent several months on an Israeli kibbutz? Did anyone know that? Does anyone know about that part of his history? Now, why would Bernie Sanders communists go to an Israeli kibbutz in the '60s? The answer is because Israeli kibbutzim are run on so they're all socialists that you know that don't you i think i'll have to explain it my friend i'm sending you government zero which everyone has gotten from me so far is is raving about stay on the, stay on the line the only reason bernie who is not religious doesn't believe in in judaism or god would go to an israeli kibbutz is because <clears throat> is kibbutz is a sort of collective farm so that was a natural place for him to go to People don't understand that Israel was originally a socialist nation, which is why Russia gave the the, the final vote to make uh, to accept Israel statehood. I don't think you know that either. When Israel was originally founded, it was a socialist nation, which is why Russia at the time voted to include Israel in the United Nations. I don't think people know that. It's only because it was a socialist nation, not because they love Jews so much. Anyway, that's that's an, it's a small point. Sanders' brother, Larry Sanders, lives in the United Kingdom. He's not related to Larry, uh, the, the comedian Larry, whatever his name. What's Larry's name, the one I love? Larry. 
Who? No one knows. Larry David, no. Sanders' brother is Larry Sanders, not Larry David, the comedian. And he lives in the U.K. He was a Green Party county councillor representing the East Oxford Division on Oxfordshire County Council. Larry Sanders ran as a Green 